Hi, my beautiful crafty friends. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. It's good to see you. Today I'm making a decoupage ballerina canvas. This is part one of a two-part series. I'll be showing you how to decoupage. I'll show you how to do some 3D effects using chipboard and clay that you bake in the oven. I'll turn paper flowers into a work of art. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss part two. If you're ready, let's make a mess. The first thing I'm going to do is cover the entire canvas, including the sides and edges in white gesso. This gives the canvas a nice base to decoupage on. I purchased some beautiful paper that I'll be decoupaging on the canvas for my base. The first one is rice paper, which I purchased on Etsy. I love rice paper. It's slightly translucent, so you can see through it a little bit and see the other papers that's under it. So I'll add that last. The other papers I just purchased at Hobby Lobby, so you'd be able to get those in any craft store. I'm using a water brush to separate out the picture that I want to use on the rice paper. Once it's wet, I'll tear it so I won't have sharp cut edges. If you don't have a water brush, you can just use a paintbrush and some water and that'll work just fine. For the other papers, I'm spraying the paper with water so that I can get the same torn effect and not a sharp cut edge. Once I have all my papers torn, I'll be using Mod Podge to glue them to the canvas for my base background. Where are you watching from? Send me a quick comment and let me know. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are, send me a quick comment and let me know. Make sure you stick around till the end. I'll be showing you how to make a beautiful vintage bow. The easy way. Now I'm adding my last picture that is made out of the rice paper. I love the way you can see through it a little bit. The writing from the paper under it shows through just a little bit, which adds a lot of interest. Now that I've finished gluing all my torn papers to the canvas, I'm going to give the entire canvas a coat of Mod Podge. I'm tearing some of the excess paper that's hanging over the edges and then gluing it down. I'm carrying over the same torn look as the top of the canvas. And I'm adding some little small torn pieces where there's too big of a blank. I have this cute little paper doily that I'm going to cut in half and add to my canvas. Now that I have all my paper decoupaged, I'm going to add a coat of matte spray sealer. I'm going to be doing some paint effects later and I don't want any of the paint to absorb into the decoupaged paper. I'm painting this pretty chipboard flourish I found at Hobby Lobby. I'm sponging it with some gold paint and then I'll be antiquing it after it dries. I watered down some dark brown paint because I want it to be more of a wash instead of in-your-face brown paint. I'm adding it to the swirls from the center of the flourish out. 
This will give it some dimension and depth. I'm adding some highlights to my flourish with a white frost wax rub. This will give it kind of a pearly look and brighten it up a bit. Okay, raise your hand if you love glitter. You can't see, but my hand is raised right now. I'm adding some brown glitter glue to the center of the flourish and fading it out from the center with a paintbrush. After this dries, I'll add a coat of triple thick glaze spray sealer. I'm making my three ballerinas out of Sculpty baking clay. I tried using air dry clay because I'm actually a fan of the air dry clays. But these ballerinas are so delicate I couldn't even unmold them until after I baked the clay. My ballerinas are baked and unmolded so I'm going to give them a coat of gold paint. This project is not for someone that likes dull. With all the gold and glitter, it's going to take your breath away once it's complete. I put some stir sticks temporarily to the backs of them with my glue gun so I'd have something to hold on to while I'm painting them. I added water to some brown paint to make it really runny. The runnier the better. I'll paint the entire ballerina and then wipe it off. The paint will stay in just the cracks and crevices, adding some dimension. And as you can see, I am antiquing myself just as much as I am the ballerina. Now it's time to add some highlights and glitter to these beautiful girls. I'm using the White Frost Wax Rub again, and at the bottom of their tutus, I'm going to add some pink glitter glue. I decided that the glitter glue wasn't going to be enough glitter. So I added some pink chunky glitter along with the glue and I'm loving it. Everything is dry, so I'm going to add a coat of glossy varnish now. I'm going to make some spray paint so I can do some special effects. I got some tiny little spray bottles on Amazon to make it in. I'm adding water and just a little bit of paint so it's very, very watery and it'll be able to be sprayed. These are just some plain paper flowers. I added the stir stick for a handle and now I'm separating all the petals. I'll be spraying them with some triple thick glaze sealer and I want it to go between all the petals. This will stiffen up the flowers a little bit so I'll be able to paint them. And they will become a work of art. Now that the spray sealer is dry, I'm going to decorate the flowers and make them beautiful. I'll be adding some wax rubs in the white frost and gold. I'll be using some of that spray paint that I made. And I'll use some gold paint for the centers of the flowers. And it looks like I am decorating my hand as well as the flower.
If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends. When I'm done with the flowers, I'll add a coat of triple thick spray sealer. I'm removing all the stir sticks from the back of everything. I want to lay it all on the canvas to see exactly where I'm going to put them because I'm going to add some texture to the background with some stencils and grout. And I want to see exactly where I want to put that. using a brick pattern stencil and I'll also do a flourish. I am using white premixed tile grout and a palette knife. It's easy and adds some great texture. Adding the brick pattern to the edges of the canvas as well, anywhere I see a large blank spot. The grout is dry now, so I'm going to use some of the spray paint I made and add some interest to the bricks and the flourishes. I'm spraying and wiping some of it off with a damp rag on the rest of the background. I don't want a mist of paint anywhere other than the grout and just the area around it. And the sprayers on these little bottles are sitting it flying everywhere. I'm using a sponge and adding some iced espresso rub to the edges of the canvas to give it an antique look. I'm shading around the flourishes with some brown mica powder to make them stand out a little bit. I love using mica powder. It's shimmery and glittery looking. The background is complete now, so I'm going to give it a quick coat of triple thick glaze spray sealer. When that dries, I'll add all my embellishments. Everything is painted, antiqued, sprayed with sealer, dry and ready to go. This is always the exciting part for me. I love when it's time to add all of my pretty embellishments to the project.
Before I glue my ballerinas to the canvas, I'm marking exactly where I want to put them with some painter's tape. Because of the glossy spray sealer I used on the canvas, it has a beautiful sheen to it. Now it's time to do the last part of this project. Let's make that vintage bow. I'm using some pink satin ribbon. I'm going to add paint to both sides of the ribbon, some pink and some blue. Then I'll scrunch it up in a ball and wrap it up with a piece of twine and then let it set overnight to dry. The ribbon is dry now, so I'm going to remove the twine and add some gold rub. Then I'll tie it in a bow and glue it to the canvas. I hope you enjoyed this video and learning something new. Tell me what you enjoyed learning the most and what you'll be trying in your next project. There's going to be a part two next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. And I'd love to have you as one of my new crafty friends. I've put together a playlist of other mixed media projects that you might enjoy. Click the next picture to be taken right to that playlist.